We can't have monsters roaming the quiet countryside now, can we? Okay, we are back. Um, I'm about to do a review of a very heavy film. Uh, it does qualify for something in the book, um, so, which is what, what I definitely wanted to get you. Um, I still need to make one up because I think I'm on 34, week 35, but I'm on you know, review 34 of here, and it's a 52-week challenge, so I need to make one up eventually. Anyway, before we really get into this, I want to do a few disclaimers. These videos are completely unedited and unfiltered, so whatever comes out of my mouth is what comes out of my mouth. I'm not going to go back and change it. I'm not going to re-record, nothing like that. Uh, no edits. I'm not going to do any cuts, so uh, beware there. Adult things will come out of my mouth, absolutely, um, um, so if you have kids in the room, you probably want to ask them to leave or put your headphones on or something like that. Uh, and also, there will be spoilers, especially for the movie that I am reviewing. But sometimes uh, I go off on tangents and give spoilers for other films because they're somewhat related or related in my mind. Have no fear. I will put a list of movies underneath this video, every movie that I talk about, and there will be headers. One of the headers will say spoilers. Uh, one will say quotes, and one will say just, just mention, something I just mentioned. Um, so tonight... Um, challenge number five, a early film of a famous actor or actress. Tonight, I am reviewing American History X, which is absolutely one of the earliest Edward Norton films. Um, could you say it was also an early Ed Furlong I'm going to look up and say, you know, how many did Ed Furlong, Edward Furlong have before this? I know he did Terminator 2 before this. I'm pretty sure he did American, I think American Heart before this. Uh, for some reason, my internet is not, or IMDb is not happy right now. Okay, there we go. There we go. Let's see. Actors. Let's go all the way down, all the way down. Terminator 2 was his first film. I knew that. He did American Heart. He did Pet Cemetery 2. Brain Scan, which I loved. I mean, just, just, that's, I, it's just ridiculous and fun and wonderful, but we're not talking about that. Anyway, no, I cannot call this an early film of his. He had way too many things, uh, way too many credits before he did this. Um, but Edward Norton had only done one or two things uh, before this. Uh, Primal Fear, The People vs. Larry Flint. And this. Now, he has two other credits, but I've never seen them. I don't know what he does in them. Uh, he has two other credits here uh, that were before uh, this. So, still, a very early film of Edward Norton. For the longest time, I thought Primal Fear was the first thing he did, but apparently not. Okay, uh, <laughs> let's move on and not get too caught up on that. Uh, movie title, I already said, American History X. Very, very heavy film, so this is not for everybody. Uh, definitely definitely a subject matter that is not everybody can sit and watch, uh, but brilliant film. Uh, year release, 1998, aspect ratio 1.85 colon 1, running time an hour and 59 minutes. Um, genre, crime, drama, rated R. Uh, date challenge completed. I completed. I watched the movie last night, um, January 25th. I'm recording the video tonight, at January 26th. Hopefully, I can get you the video tonight. Sometimes I can't because I really have to l l go through the entire video again. I'm not editing anything, but what I'm doing is picking out all the movies that I mention and trying to make that list. Plus, it takes a while for YouTube to upload a long, you know, an hour-long video uh, or more. Uh, anyway, starring, they don't give me nearly enough uh, room for this, so I'm going to go off of IMDb. Of course, I've already said Edward Norton and Edward Furlong, but Beverly D'Angelo is fantastic in this. Um, Ethan Suplee, 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 uh, I think he's wonderful in this. He's just fantastic. Uh, Farouz Abalk, Avery Brooks, Elliot Gould, you know, everybody's great in this. Stacey Keach, uh, Guy Tori. I mean, there's just so many people in this in, in this film. Everybody does such a great job. I, you know, I, the, the acting is fantastic in this. Um, directed by Tony Kay. I didn't know who that was. I had to look him up. He's some guy from England uh, that did a bunch of music videos. And I was like, oh, it kind of, I can kind of tell. 
because he has a very um, handheld, gritty, almost documentary style to this film. Sometimes it works really well, and sometimes it's just a little annoying, honestly, uh, the camera work. Uh, produced by John Morrissey, written by David McKenna, music by Anna Ann or Annie uh, Dudley. Uh, awards received. Okay, I was a little shocked. You know, I had thought that Edward Norton's first film was Primal Fear, and he got an Academy Award nomination, and by God, he deserved it. It was fucking amazing. Now, what won the year that he did Primal Fear? Holy crap. Let's see if I can find it uh, without taking too fucking long. Um, what year was Primal Fear? 94, 95? I could have swore. I could have swore he had a nomination for that film. It was his first film, and it was like a shock. I thought it was his first film. It was like a shock. He got nominated. Prime of Fear was 96. So, I was looking at the wrong year. Okay, 96. Yes, Edward Norton got a, a nomination that year. Cuba Gooding Jr. won for Jerry Maguire. I saw that. I liked it. It was not on 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 the top of my list of fantastic movies, um, but uh, but I enjoyed it. Uh, so anyway, um, I always thought that that was his first film, and he got an Academy Award nomination. I was like, holy crap. And then he does this movie, which I thought was his second, but no, he did Larry Flint in between. And again, a nomination. And 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 I thought he deserved it for both films. Oh my God. Now, did he deserve to win for both films? I can't really say with any authority, because when he was nominated for this, uh, Roberto Benigni, one for Life is Beautiful, which I never saw, but I did see Saving Private Ryan. I did see Gods and Monsters. I did see Affliction. All of those films I saw. Tom Hanks was nominated for Pri Saving Private. Ian McKellen was nominated for Gods and Monsters. Nick Nolte for Affliction. Edward Norton, in my opinion, was miles above all. All of those performances, in my opinion. I love Tom Hanks. I'm not trying to say anything bad against him. I'm not saying anything bad about Ian McKellen or Nick Nolte. They just didn't have it in that. They didn't have it over Norton in, in, in American History X. Norton in American History X was, like, mind-blowing. Now, once I go and watch Life is Beautiful and see Roberto Benigni's um, performance... I will finally be able to say with authority whether I agree that he should have won or I disagree and think that Edward Norton should have won. Um, I don't like saying it before I, I, I've i seen all the films, but he is remarkable in this. I don't want to get too caught up in that. But awards received, he was nominated but didn't win, but he did win the Satellite Award for his performance in this. Edward Norton did. Uh, why did you choose this particular film? You know, I find it amazing, this film. I find it insanely impactful, very smart. Um, it And even to today, with how many times I've seen it, it still impacts me to watch this. There are still parts of it that are hard to watch. We'll talk about that. Uh, have you seen this movie before? Oh, yes, I, I've seen it plenty of times. I own it. I did not see it in the theater when it came out. I didn't even hear about it. You know, I was like, what, you know, what is that? So years later, when it came out on video, I was working at Blockbuster, I believe, and I rented it. I was like, oh, I love Edward Norton. I'm renting that. And it blew my mind. Blew my mind. Would you recommend this movie, Why or Why Not? You, you know what? Yes and no. This is a very serious subject matter, and there's some people that just can't handle... This amount of subject when it comes to racism and 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 the violence and you know the and the language. Um, so I would be careful who I recommend this to, but I would absolutely tell anybody that it's a fantastic film because it is. Uh, I rated it ten out of ten, uh, five out of five, just 
fantastic. Um, which character character were you most able to identify with or connect with in what way? So I did double on this one. If you've been listening to my, uh, my reviews, I did both. I said, okay, I would love to play Derek Vineyard. Absolutely. Would they ever cast me as Derek Vineyard? No, they would never cast me. They would look at my last name and be like, we're not casting you as a white supremacist. There's no way you'd be able to do it. Okay, I kind of look, if I shave this off, <laughs> which I didn't tonight. Um, I tried a different length here. I don't know if I like it. I have new glasses I got today. I don't know if you can tell. I'm not sure I like them yet. The first time in, in progressive, which is a little weird. Anyway, uh, <laughs> not to get too personal. I would love to play this character. Would Hollywood cast me as this character is the other question. Much like I talked about before, they would never cast me as Superman. It's just never going to happen. Even though I would, I, that that is one of the characters I would love to, love, love, oh, ever since I was a little kid, would love to have played. Absolutely. Uh, anyway, they, they just won't. And I would love to play him because he's amazing. And he has all those beautiful dimensions. And you literally are playing two separate characters throughout this film. Jekyll and Hyde. You are literally playing two characters in this entire film. You know, uh, Primal Fear. You are playing two characters in the entire film. Brilliant. Uh, and I would love to do that. Now, who do I most identify with? I think people would put me in the in the realm of, of Sweeney. Avery Brooks, Sweeney, absolutely, uh, you, because he's most em he's the most empathetic in this film. He he is hopeful and encouraging and wants to help. Um, so yes, uh, I believe that that would be where I most able to identify with. Best line or memorable quote. I have to go to IMDb for this because honestly, the best line slash memorable quote is really long and fucking fantastic. Danny says it when he says, you know, when he says, you know, uh, uh, my brother said, always go out with a, a quote from somebody famous, blah, blah, blah. He says that he says. So the quote is, if you don't know, Abraham Lincoln, and it's, we are not enemies, but friends. We must not be enemies. Though passion may have strained, it must not break our bonds of affection. The mystic chords of memory will swell when again touched, as surely they will be by the better angels of our nature. Just an amazing quote. I love that they put it in this film. It belongs in this film about racism. Absolutely. And it's fantastic. Um... Moving on. Were you surprised by the ending? What would you do differently? Spoilers! If you have not seen this film, before I answer this question, if you have not seen this film, don't watch this review. It's too important. It's There, there are too many huge plot points that are fucked if I give it away. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Big time, okay? Big time. So you have been warned. If you have not watched this, turn this review off, watch it, and then come back and watch the and listen to the review. Okay, here it goes. Here it goes. Were you surprised by the ending? What would you do differently? Yes, I did not expect Danny to die. I did not expect that. I was caught up. Holy fucking shit. And I have notes to the effect. We'll get to it. I did not expect that. And it's 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 brilliant and perfect and wonderful i love the way it's done i mean he narrates the film you don't expect him to die he's narrating the film they've done that before american beauty but american beauty he tells you he's gonna die but he's still narrating it so this is very much like it you know danny is is narrating this but we don't know that he's the one that dies so we are we're at the end we're expecting it's going to be Derek, and it's not holy shit Like I said, huge spoilers. Did you see hints of the star's later acting style in this early film? If so, what were they? I think he's brilliant. 
regardless of his personality in real life, because I've seen plenty of videos and plenty of reviews that say he's very difficult to work with. He ruined the the Hulk film, uh, the MCU Hulk film, because he wanted too much control and he ruined the story and nobody likes that film anymore. I love it. I think it's fantastic. I think it's one of the best. I, I, I'm Anyway, moving on. We're at 15 minutes and I haven't really got to my notes. So... Um, regardless of Edward Norton's personality in real life, I don't give a shit. His talent is undeniable. He is fantastic. And like I've already said, Primal Fear, God, wow, and this. They show his his brilliance in being able to take on so many different characters in the same in the same film. Dual characters. Anything else you'd like to say? I have plenty of notes. Um, this last little note, which I never read until I read it with you. Tom Hanks was 26 when he starred in his first leading role in a movie, Mazes and Monsters, 1982. You know, I've never even heard of that film, Mazes and Monsters. Never heard of it. Uh, uh, Fantastic, you know, for for Tom Hanks. I've already sort of mentioned it tonight. Anyway, let's get into the notes because I have a lot, but I I have a funny feeling a lot of them are going to go pretty quick. Um, Interesting choice to have... Now, there, there, you have choices when you're making a film. So many choices when you're making a film. But especially when you're making a film that you're going to show scenes from now and scenes from the past. How do you do that? There are plenty of choices on how to show that they're different. He decides to show the past in black and white and the present in high color, high color. I mean, it's, I mean, you watch their, their faces are saturated with red, but they're white. It's high color. Anyway, I thought it was interesting that he decided to do black and white. And that first opening scene where we're watching the credits is the, is Venice beach. It's nice. Um, I like that it starts with the most pivotal scene for almost every character, this this the the, the scene that m- that culminates in so much change in so many people in circumstance in in life, uh, but we don't get to see the whole thing. Uh, I have this note for later, and I'll just say it now. I love 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 how he has broken up this story, much like Pulp Fiction. I love that how they break it up and they tell you what they want to tell you when. They want to tell you. And this does it brilliantly. I only, I, I'm only i showing you bits and pieces, not the whole story. I'll show you parts later of this situation. He comes back to this scene and that scene and this scene. And he only wants to show you what you need to know now to further the story where I want it to go. I'll show you hints of this later on. You know? I love it. It's brilliant. It's it's fantastically done. Uh, in the beginning, um, that first scene when he goes and wakes Derek or or or, or stops Derek from having sex and says, "Hey, somebody's, uh, you know, a, a black guy's trying to steal your your uh, your truck." The camera work there is really good. I love the camera work when it goes through the hall, follows him, comes through. The movements of the camera are brilliant. There are not a whole lot of angles. In this film that I am like, ooh, I love the camera angle. I love that. That's great. Not so much. But there are points like this in the beginning where the camera movement is brilliant. Very well done. And I have notes later on where there are parts where the camera movements are done really well and where the camera movements are just like, ugh, ugh, ugh. No. Wrong. So... I, I don't know what, who who did it or who was in charge of it, but there are certain times where it's brilliant and certain times where it's too much. No, too much. Anyway, moving on. What a way, holy shit, what a way to get your attention. This whole first scene where, where they're trying to steal his car and he goes out and he shoots them. And, and we see that we're, we're, if you don't know what the movie is about, which I didn't, you ought, because I never seen a preview of it. I had just saw it uh, in, in at, at, at Blockbuster and was like, oh, I love Ed Norton and Ed Furlong. I'm definitely going to, you know, rent this. I didn't know that this movie was about racism. So right away, I love in the beginning that we see the swastika on his chest so we know what we're dealing with. And and the black guys are trying to steal his car and he goes out and he shoots and kills it. And you're just like, what the... F- Whoa, what the fuck? You know? 
he's just amazing in that opening scene. His energy and his power and his, you know, when he... The only the, the the only real thing I had seen him in was Primal Fear. And throughout most of Primal Fear, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, throughout most of Primal Fear, he is this almost simpleton type character, sweet, you know, from the Midwest little sweet kid, Aaron, Aaron, um, who has a stutter and sweet and, and, and nice. Yes, spoilers, at the end, yes, he, it's revealed that he's not really that, and Roy is, is is the person. So there's a little bit of him in that movie that gets to play something a little more tough, and I see that a little bit. But I'm coming off of only seeing him being mostly a, a simple, sweet little character, and here we are, the first fucking scene you see him in, and he is like... One, he looks completely different because he worked out and he looks fantastic and he's very, you know, muscular and built and his shaved head and his his attitude, just just the look and his presence. And oh my God, it's just a complete shock to see him like this, Edward Norton. Whoa. And I love this opening scene where he, the police come, he shoots, the police come and he turns around and he looks at Danny and he's got that spark in his eye like like joke fucking joker like hmm. and as soon as the cop touches him he watch his face his everything his demeanor changes and he hard as fucking nails it's brilliant he does such a great job in this movie he does such a great fucking academy award nomination is deserved i can't really say whether he deserved the, the win but nomination apps a fucking lootly apps a fucking lootly wow Oh, okay. So, I'm just going to say it. You know, this... Sometimes, this movie is really hard for me to watch. Because Danny reminds me of my younger brother. So much reminds me of my younger brother growing up. I'm not going to say... I'm not going to get really into it, but there are so many times I'm like, that's totally my younger brother. That's totally my younger brother who is currently, unfortunately, in prison. But jail, prison, I don't know which. I, I don't... You know, the whole... Fa anyway, I'm not going to get into that. What I'm going to say is it's really hard to see how much Danny in this film resembles my brother growing up. I have some more notes to it, my younger brother. Like, just... It's hard to watch sometimes because I see it there. And I wish that I could... You know, I wish I... I, I you can't... You can lead... What is it? You can lead... A starving man to water, but you can't make him drink. I think that's the saying. It's it's. Uh, I wish that I could. Anyway, Edward Edward Furlong does a great job in this movie. There, you know, everybody. Edward Norton is a. I've already said fantastic. Edward Furlong is is amazing in this movie. I, I believe him a hundred percent. Beverly D'Angelo is wonderful in this movie. Wow. Ethan Supli, I believe him a thousand percent. I think I have this note later on. Oh my God, he is brilliant. Avery Brooks is wonderful. Elliot Gould, as always, is 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 fantastic. And Stacy Keach, eh, he's a piece of fucking shit. I fucking hate him, but he's wonderful. And Guy Tory, whoa. Yeah, okay, okay. Anyway, let's get into the. <laughs> you know, everybody does such a great job in this movie. It's so well acted. I already did that. No, okay. The news clip is so well done. The news clip that that shows you know uh, um, Derek talking about how his his dad was just just killed, um, shot by a sorry these are new glasses, shot by a a, a black person in, in in a black neighborhood putting out a fire blah blah blah, and he's so frustrated and upset. Um, 
and he has it's it's so well done. I think it's brilliant. It's so well done. I love it. I absolutely love it. But what I will say, you know, and I'm trying I'm trying not to be too political and too hey in your face about these things. My you know, I think my brother thought he was a skinhead for a while you know, Spanish people cannot be I don't know Anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to get into that. Okay, let's not get into that. Let's talk about this scene is brilliant. And he has this line that bothers me because so many people believe this way. And he says, you know, millions of white people came to this country and flourished. Why is it that these black people can't get their act together after how, you know, after how long being freed? And that, that line bothers me because... What we're unwilling to say, so many white people are unwilling to say and unwilling to realize, you didn't come to America and flourish. You came to America and decimated. I'm 34, 34% Native American. You came to the, the white people, not you, not you, the white people that came before you came to this country and did not flourish they decimated desecrated took over genocide whatever you want to say destroyed what this country really was and then made for yourself whatever you want you did not flourish that 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 is the it, that is the wrong terminology that is the wrong sentiment and when when white people say that it bothers me it's not it's not true it's not true. You know, Derek has a lot of issues in this. He's very angry. He's very mad about what happened to him. I don't blame him. I don't blame him at all. I would be mad. I would be frustrated. I would be pissed off. But you can't blame an entire race. You have to blame who did what. Who shot your your, your father? Not an entire race race of people you know you know uh, uh, you know an asian american fucking shot my father so i hate all asian americans that's zero that has zero sense <laughs> that makes zero sense anyway you know i mean that's the point of this film is is the that's the point of the film he's so frustrated angry gr angry and wants someone to blame who comes is cameron comes and points him in the wrong direction and he goes the wrong direction so far so that he ends up in prison i mean that's what the whole film's about and like i said it's such a, a hard topic to listen to or watch but it's brilliantly done watch it it's brilliantly done please wow wow the basketball scene I love this basketball scene. But to be honest, for me, it's 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 challenging to understand because this whole race against race, white against black, you know, white against um Native American, white against Chinese, I mean I mean how many Chinese were, were killed during the, the making of the railroad. Anyway, this doesn't make any sense to me. You're saying because where you were born, you're better. You're saying because your skin tone, you're better. Like, that's like so foreign to me. I don't understand. It's the same thing I know a friend of mine doesn't understand. I can't understand why you say a, a VW Beetle is a feminine car. What? It's an inanimate object. How can it be feminine? I don't understand. So there are certain things that don't I don't I don't get. I can't You can say this relates to this. It's the same thing. Put your mindset in that. But there are certain things that I just don't get. What makes you think that you're better because your skin tone is different? What makes you think you're better because you were born in a different area of the world? We're all human. <laughs> we all live on this earth. I don't understand what makes you think you're better. Anyway, it's hard to see this scene where he comes in and he said whites against blacks and 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 not for money for these courts and for not now but can forever. 
it's sad to see that he hates that he hates he wants the separation of race he wants us against them us and them and that us and them mentality makes no sense we are all human We should be Star Trek. We should be for the advancement of humankind because we are all human. We all, what did JFK say? And they, they put it in the movie JFK. We all breathe the same air. We all inhabit this planet. We all breathe the same, the same air. Anyway, um, yes, we, we're, we all so th this scene is great because it, it challenges me to see it from from each character's point of view. It challenged me to see it from Derek's point of view. You know, it challenges me to see it from I don't know if they have names, but the uh, the, you, the the black people's point of view. I don't I don't know if they I don't remember them saying their names in that scene. I mean, there's no reason to. So uh, it definitely challenges me to, as an empathetic person, a very empathetic person, to look at it from each person's point of view. I don't care about my skin tone. I want to know from your point of view. I, I want to feel it and see it from your point of view. And again, it's an actor thing. I want to get what you're getting and feel what you're feeling because this is a very hard scene for me to watch and understand. So instead of understanding, I just want to kind of put myself in each person and just envelop myself in what they're doing and what they're saying and how they feel and kind of feel that scene. Uh, anyway, let's move on. You, what it must have felt like to do this film, everybody's got, is so charged. This is such a charged situation. This is such a charged topic. How do you, at, in 1998, was it 98? In 1998, how do you, as someone who is not racist, 98, as someone who is not racist, how do you put yourself in that situation and be racist? How do you put yourself in that situation? You know, maybe some of those black actors have never dealt with real racism. How do you put yourself in that situation and say, I, I'm going to have to deal with this? You know, the, the acting, the, the, the being in this film must have been interesting. Okay, here's this note, Ethan Suplee, Suple or Suple, Suple, fucking amazing. I believe him a thousand percent. He's one of the characters in this film that's just, I, I, they, I feel like they got a racist off the fucking street and put him in this movie. That's what I feel like. <laughs> what was the other one? A couple of years ago I saw... I'll probably remember it later. I'm really trying to remember it now. I saw this movie and I just went, God, I felt like they got a junkie off the fucking street and just filmed them. But it wasn't. It was an actress and she was fucking great. Great. At this character. I feel the same way with Ethan uh, Suplee. I feel like, did they get just some fucking racist off the street and film him? Because he's brilliant. And I believe him a thousand percent. Wow. Wow. How did he not get a nomination for supporting? Okay, anyway. <laughs> Speaking of Ethan... That line he had. You calling me a blimp? You fucking Democrat? What? It's so sad that political party has turned into us and them. Political party has turned into black and white. Political party has turned into a, a, a racist event. <laughs> because I am a political party and you are the opposite opposite political party we can never see eye to eye we can never we're, we're we're as different as black color white color okay and i'm like that's just, what <laughs> and and this line like drives that home and i'm like i don't understand that what the fuck i'm nonpartisan. why because i hate if there's one if there's if there's if there's if there's three things I hate in this world, 
one of those three is going to be politics. Fucking hate politics. It's got to be my top three things I hate in this world. It's so disgusting. And what it's turned into, my entire life, what it has been is disgusting. I have never seen politics in my life that has been for the positive. There are people in politics that have done positive things. Absolutely. Absolutely. But politics as a whole has always been a disgusting thing. I have never seen it be a positive thing. So it's just interesting to see that. To, to see that the insult is you're a Democrat. <laughs> I myself am nonpartisan because I I I don't believe I, I ugh, ugh, it's all disgusting it's all disgusting. Um, Seth's interview. Seth's interview of Danny is is it's it. Like I said, it's so hard to watch this movie because I see my younger brother, so when he says. Cut the bullshit. I believe death, sex, and greed. I forget what he says. And he's cut the bullshit. I want to hear what you, with some conviction. I want to hear what you really believe. No, what you want to hear, Seth, is what you have taught Danny to believe. What Cameron has taught Danny to believe. Danny has no, has he decided to think on his own no obviously not has he decided to like review both sides of the situation and choose for himself no no not at all people used to bible bash me like a mofo okay i'm a i'm a gay man i'm and i came out when i was in high school so people used to bible bash me all the time can i say with any authority anything back un until i've read the bible and understand what's there and what is said in there technically no technically no so what did i do hold on okay anyway um there are certain people that when they message or text me i have to look because they are very important to me anyway moving on uh holy shit i lost my train of thought I'm putting my phone down. Crap. I forgot what I was saying. Damn it. This interview with Danny is brilliant. I love it because what he's regurgitating is everything that he's been taught by the wrong people and it hurts because you know my brother also listened to the wrong people had his wrong ideas i don't think danny has thought for himself or felt like he had to think for himself yet and that's kind of the point of the whole whole thing he gets both sides of the stories later hate is baggage he says later and it is it is. It's baggage. And all of that interview is just regurgitated hate against the other side, the other people. And it's sad. It's stupid. When Derek comes into the room after that interview or while that interview is going on, Derek comes into the room and stops, says, Seth, go away, talks to his brother. We finally get, here it is, we finally get, there, whoa, there's something not Derek about Derek. Because all we've seen so far is Derek the white supremacist. Absolutely. Derek the neo-Nazi. Absolutely. And here we are. This is the first time we see Derek is, is saying things that are not along that line quite. Listen to Sweeney. Whatever he tells you, do it. Whatever he tells you, do it. So here we finally get like, there's something up with Derek. This is the first hint of that. Really well done.
Oh, I love this scene where Danny is trying to start his paper. And he writes, you know, analyze, interpret, analyze, interpret, anal sex, and blah, blah, blah. And he just, you know, with the way his mind wanders and where he goes. I love that scene. I love that they included it. It's really cool. Um, and then he tries to start his paper. It's really well done. I like it. Uh, the grocery store scene. You know, this scene is disturbing and hard to watch. It's such blind hate for people who are just not like you and such zero tolerance, zero desire to see from somebody else's point of view, zero desire to figure out the truth. All you want to do is put your prejudice over there instead of let me see the truth. How do they know that these people don't have green cards? How do they know that these people are not here legally, only just can't speak the language? How do they... And <laughs> this is a country of immigrants. You know, the, the white people that came here didn't speak the, late, the, the native language. There are so many native languages in this country. There were so many native languages in this country. Listen to, to, to uh, 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 Gladstone's acceptance of what was the, uh, the, the Golden Globe. Like she says, I don't speak their language, but I was, I was privileged to be a part of this film and represent them. Okay, yes, because there were so many different languages in this country, much like, I mean, look how big the United States is compared to Europe. There are so many different languages, so many different cultures in Europe. There are so many different languages and so many different cultures in the Native American uh, uh, um, uh, aspect and country that that when the white people came here, they didn't speak it. They were immigrants. <laughs> They were illegal immigrants. Fucking white people were illegal immigrants. <laughs> Let's just say it like it is. <laughs> the truth is, you are not invited here. <laughs> okay, anyway, this scene is, is so beautifully done. The, the camera angles, the slow-mo, what's being said, what's being done, especially that woman on the register where they're throwing the stuff on her face and, and, and what they're being what they're saying. It's it's a little it's a little frustrating, honestly, to see the pads on the st stunt doubles like where they are. I know sometimes you can't really hide it. When when a blood pack goes off, you can't hide the fact that it's a fucking blood pack. And you kind of just have to suspend disbelief. Multiple times in this scene, you see the, the support packs for all the people who do stunts in this scene. And it's a little, it takes away just a little bit. But for the most part, it, it is a wonderful scene. Hard to watch. Absolutely just that blind rage and that blind hate and that mist misdirected you know anger it's it's brilliant and hard to watch that, that's like this whole movie brilliant and hard to watch everybody was feeling so good that we just didn't see it coming maybe we should have That dinner scene with Elliot Gould. It's... That dinner scene with Elliot Gould. Wow. Okay, first of all, Edward Norton is fucking amazing throughout this whole scene. He is like... He is like I've never seen him before and never seen him him since. He, his character there, he takes it on so 100%, 1000%. He takes it on with such 
vigor and such reality that I'm like, God, what? that's fucking Edward Norton? Whoa. And like I said, that is the mark of a great actor. I believe him 100%, 1,000%, and I don't see Edward Norton. I'm like, whoa, in that scene, in that dinner scene. I see a fucking neo-Nazi, a white supremacist. I absolutely see that. Somebody so misdirected and with so much hate and so much anger, you know, wow to see somebody so misdirected it's sad because you're only looking at it from one point of view and you're not trying to see the whole truth you're only trying to see your truth who are you to say it was excessive i think it was absolutely appropriate okay but who are you to say that that was appropriate i love this scene I love this this line where he says, you know, you know, we grant cops a certain authority as society. We grant them, a, but we also have to hold them accountable. So anyway, he says we grant them a certain, you know, authority. Who are you to say that that was excessive? I think it was absolutely textbook, you know, absolutely, you know, appropriate. But then you have to think as as the audience, as as a free thinking person, you have to go, yeah, but Derek, who are you to say that that was appropriate? You are not a cop. You are not in that situation. You are not that person. Who are you to say that that was appropriate? Who is, uh, you know, uh, uh, Gould's character, uh, Murray, who is Murray to say that it was inappropriate? Who is Derek to say it was appropriate? No, that's why you have people, you have people where the real power is to say, do we grant this person the, this power? Do we uh, Do we say that this person... Use that power appropriately or not. And it's hard because history, history, we know if they get off, this city burns. Dark blue. All, all about, all in the situation, uh, all during the the trial, of. All during that trial, um, Rodney King, is 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 dark blue. Fantastic movie. If they get off, this city burns. Um, it's unfortunate that that. The judicial system is absolutely broken. Absolutely. It doesn't function right. But it's what we have. I have no doubt that the judicial system is broken. No doubt. Because we are putting judgment in the hands of people who have their own prejudices and their own beliefs and their own views. Absolutely own prejudices absolutely i'm not excluding myself i'm just saying but there are some people who can really look at the situation open and say you know i'm going to make a dispassionate judgment so this situation with with those cops getting off do i believe they should have gotten off absolutely not but then again we get to the point where we have um floyd kneel on his neck for how long that's ridiculous and we held those police accountable thank you we we should have we should have so we've come strides there are certain people who can look at the situation and say i'm going to judge the situation not through race colored glasses i'm going to look at it for the situation that it is. And then unfortunately we get people who, who don't look at it that way. And that's why I believe the judicial system is absolutely broken. You know? But it's what we have and we have to... And we've granted it a certain authority so we have to accept it. Right, wrong, whether we think it's right or wrong, accept it. Accept it for what it is. Oh, 
it's a hard thing to do, but you know, side note, it's a hard thing to, it is a hard thing to do, but you just have to, what, you know, the Bible says, follow the law of the land, whether you agree with it or not, you have to follow the law of the land. Oh, whether you agree with it or not, there's a lot of things I don't agree with. A lot of things I don't agree with. But I have, this is where I live. And I have to accept the fact that this is where I live. And accept the law for what it is and how it works. And we are making changes, which is positive and hopeful. Anyway, I am ashamed that you came out of my body. Beverly D'Angelo is brilliant in this scene, in this part. I'm not sure why they had her move back to, after Murray leaves, like slow-mo. I love the slow-mo back to the house, but I don't understand why she kneels and puts her hands out at the curb. It doesn't make any sense to me. That scene hasn't happened. So, um, excuse me, that doesn't make any sense to me. He was just trying to be artistic, fine, whatever. Beverly D'Angelo is wonderful in this part, and I love that line delivery when she comes and says that. And it just hurts, honestly. I am not a parent, but I can understand how a parent feeling that way or a parent saying that can be gut-wrenching for both the parent and the child. And it's such a... Woo! It's such a charged moment. Here's one of my notes where... Absolutely, you know, Ed Furlong reminds me of, of my brother. When when he gives her the airplane ride, airplane. he's so sweet and innocent and adorable, but his beliefs are so fucked up. It's hard to reconcile those two things. It's hard to see how sweet and affectionate and wonderful you are at your base nature, but your beliefs are so askew and so ridiculous and fucked up that it causes you to do or behave in other ways. Whoa, it's such a challenging part to see. But not only that, but literally right after that, Doris, mom, says, when are you going to let that beautiful hair grow back? And he says, the day you quit smoking, I cannot tell you how many times I have literally heard that exact two lines from my younger brother and my mom. I'm not fucking lying. Not fucking lying. I've heard ex that exact conversation between my, my younger brother and my mom. So many times when I was younger. So many times when I was younger. I, side note, I do not shave my head because I am a white supremacist. I do not shave my head because I feel like I am a white supremacist. I shave my head because I am ashamed of the, I hate the fact that my fucking hairline has receded and I have a big bald patch back here. So I said, I said, Bruce Willis style, I said, fuck it. So that's why I shave my head. It has nothing to do with anything else except for the fact that I hate that I'm losing my hair. Of all of my siblings, I'm the one losing my hair. <laughs> it it frustrates me. Okay, moving on. <laughs> the infamous curb scene. The infamous, motherfucking infamous curb scene. I have heard so many people who said... I saw that movie, it was fucking brilliant, and I can never watch it again because of the scene, the curb scene. If you have seen it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't seen it, you shouldn't be watching this review. Fucking stop this review and watch the movie, please. <laughs> okay, moving on. The, cur the infamous curb scene. I get it. I get how it's so gut-wrenching. I understand how impactful it is. And for me, it wasn't that way. It wasn't that way at all. I get that it's, it, it, wow, it's crazy, it's fucked up. Ugh. I get it. But for me, I've lived with so much violence in my family and in, 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 in growing up that it wasn't 
outside the realm of possibility. It didn't shock me as much as it shocks some people. It is impactful, absolutely. It is wrong, absolutely. It, absolutely. And it's filmed very, very well and done very well. You don't see it, which is wonderful. I think a lot of people, their brain fills in what the film doesn't show. And that is more impactful to them than what the film actually showed. They don't show anything. They show him put his teeth on the curb. They show Derek, but they don't show it, the impact at all. They don't show it at all. And they show the after effect real quick. Anyway, very great scene. I agree. Very impactful. Very raw. But it didn't get me the way it, it got a lot of people I know. The neo Nazi the neo Nazi party. Here's where I can say some of the camera work is fucked. Especially how many times you see the shadow of the actual camera on people. Like, didn't you watch the dailies? Fucking reshoot that from a different angle, please. It's so distra dis uh, distracting. Distraught, I was going to say. It's so distracting. Insanely distracting. To see the shadow of the camera on people. The entire shadow. I get that sometimes you get like a little piece of the, the camera shadow on it. And you're like, okay, let's move on. But you're talking about the entire fucking camera shadow on somebody. Reshoot that. You can watch the dailies and go, no, no, no. We need to shoot that from a different angle. You can just think. If you have light behind it, you're... When you're filming it, can't you see the shadow of the camera on people when you're filming it? As you can see, I have strong opinions about this. You know what? I have such strong opinions about that that I should change my rating right now from, from 10. I'm changing it right now. No joke. I'm changing it from 10 to, to 9. 10 out of 10... I am I'm literally you cannot have a 10 out of 10 film and have something that fucked up in your movie. So, I am doing a four and a half out of 5, 10 out of 10. You can't. You can't. Like what please reshoot that. Reshoot that. Anyway, moving on. The child How many notes do I have? God bless it. Where are we at? 50 fucking 7. Almost an hour already. I'm sorry. I, this is going to be a long review and I didn't expect it to be. The 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 child in the, the Nazi uniform impacts me like the child in Braveheart at his... at Wallace's execution. What? You're going to... You're going to impact a child that way? You're going to teach a child that? And, and that's what... That's... A sad part of what's wrong with this country is that it just perpetuates. It just perpetuates. That's all you've learned. How can you be mad at somebody if that's all they've learned? Stop being mad at people who are fucking racist and try to open their mind to the, the reality of, of, of... That's all they've been taught. It's not their fault. It's their fucking parents' fault and their parents' parents and their parents' parents. Realize that you're not... You're not reacting to somebody who's racist who's just racist on their own you're acting you're, you're reacting to somebody who's racist because they've been taught to be that way and it's sad and it's fucked up but try to have some empathy and realize that this person in front of you has been taught that way their entire life and that scene where the child with the nazi uniform it's just it just yes that's it when when Derek finally talks to 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 Cameron, wow! Now we get it. Now we get the shift. Now we we've already been questioning. He's not the Derek we've seen in the whole first part of the movie, and here we go. Now we get it. He wants out. Complete one eighty. I don't even know why he's there at the party, except for to tell him, I'm out. It's just insane. 
the whole party comes to a halt. Holy shit. When, when, when he assaults Cameron, that's the only place I watch Norton and I go, I, I could have done that. I could have done that better. Absolutely. Because when he threatens Cameron, I'm like, I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure I believe that you're really you really believe you're really telling him you come near Danny, I'll fucking feed you your heart. Do you really believe that? Are you really saying that to to, to, to Cameron? Are you really? Because I'm gonna get picky now because you were nominated. I could have done that better. I could have done that better. Anyway, you know, the whole party comes to a halt. Oh, here's here's something interesting. Okay. Then we get the part where he's he's finally he leaves the party. Danny comes up to him, confronts him, and then he finally tells him he finally talks to him about what it was like in prison. I recently got a subscription to Apple TV. I'd be meaning to do it forever and ever and ever. Years ago, a friend of mine told me that Defending Jacob was wonderful and I should watch it. And it's taken me until now to get you know an Apple subscription and watch Defending Jacob. And oh my fuck. Fucking God, I was blown away. Intense, brilliant, wonderful, like this, hard to watch, very serious situation. There's an episode in there where Jacob is at uh, uh, the the gene, gen, genealogy, yeah, genealogy, gen, uh, uh, genetics, the genealogy, uh, a therapist or whatever, she, he's at her office and he's doing this empathy test where he's seeing these pictures and he's pushing the button, positive, negative, positive, negative. I'm assuming it's positive, negative, positive, negative. How do you feel? And she's watching his reactions. I I was wa- I was re-watching with my friend David. I've already told you about him, David DeVore. Great guy. He has a, he has a, a YouTube channel that I've already plugged before. Um I turned to my friend David because I'm re-watching it with him. He hasn't seen it. And I said, there are certain scenes in movies like this. I wonder what I would feel like if that happened to me in real life. Not if I was on trial for murder because I don't think I'd ever be on <laughs> ever be on trial for murder. But if, if a genealogy therapist or therapist turned that empathy test on me... And I had to click, 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 and 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 watch my reactions. I wonder how the results would come out. I wonder what their interpretation of my results would be. I really, really, really wonder. Like, wow, if I took that test, what it would, what would it be? And watching American History X when he goes to prison and how he is and reacts and is in prison, I wonder to myself sometimes, how would I be, would I ever be in prison? No, I would never fucking be in prison. There's, I, I would never do anything to, but how would I react and be and feel in prison? What would my, what would my personality or di- dichotomy be in prison i wonder that sometimes and this movie makes me wonder it a lot of movies make me wonder it when people you know shawshank redemption and escape plan there are so many movies that i'm one i wonder how i would do in the prison world because it is a completely different world it's a completely different society absolutely in the joint you the nigga, not me. Love that line. I fucking love it because it makes sense. <laughs> How many black people are in prison? Unfortunately. How many white people are in prison? Again, unfortunately, you know, there are plenty of people that probably should be in prison, white people that probably should be in prison who aren't. And plenty of black people who are in prison, I know for sure, who shouldn't be. So it's interesting to have that line there. I love that line. You the nigga, not me. Love it. Uh, and 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 Guy Tory is just fucking brilliant. Um, 
I love that scene where Doris goes and visits Derek in prison. It's so charged and wonderful. They both do a great job, especially Beverly D'Angelo. Wow, that scene is like a cut above. That's just shows her talent, shows her talent. Oh, the angry sex scene. I love that. It just shows off Guy Tori's ability to be fantastic. I love it. It's so fun. He does such a great job. Again, like Ethan Supli, I believe him a thousand percent. The performances in this are just great. Great. I that the story when when Lamont tells Derek why he's in prison. He says that doesn't make sense. You didn't. You didn't get in here. You didn't get that many years for stealing. Stealing a TV, and then he explains why. They said I threw the TV. Said it. No, no, no. He grabbed my arm and I dropped it. Of course they would do that to a black person. Fucked up. And to a white person, they'd be like, eh, let him off. It's it's so frustrating anyway i don't want to get too political it is frustrating but that just points out how it's not equal watch that brilliant brilliant um documentary on netflix it's isn't it called the 13th Or it's called Just 13th. I think it's called Just 13th. It's a documentary on Netflix. I challenge you to watch it. It will explain a lot about who's in prison and why. Let's move on. Um, <laughs> I almost don't want to say this note. Okay. Okay. Just going to do it. Just going to do it. Lighten things up. Lighten. This has been a very heavy review. Let's just lighten things up. The shower scene. I ain't going to lie. I'm looking for, I'm looking for Edward Norton's Jimmy. I'm like, ooh, are we gonna see something? A little something? I'm not a big, <laughs> I'm not too, too, you know, attracted to Ed Norton. But you know, I mean, as a gay man, I'm always looking for. Let me. Are we gonna see it? Are we gonna see it? We're not gonna. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I don't want to make this too weird, but just wanted to throw that in because it lightens it up a little bit. Um, the shower scene. The brilliant close-ups. I love a lot of the close-ups in this film and the close-ups in that scene are wonderful. The unfortunate thing is it shows off the fact that the tattoos are fake. Some of them, and in this scene, in this scene particular, some of them look like they're put on with the fucking marker, magic marker. It looks like it's marker um, in this scene, unfortunately. Um, when, when Sweeney goes to see... Derek, I know we're 108. Let's try to... When Sweeney goes to see Derek, it shows off Sweeney's character. It shows off both of them. And Derek is now, like, starting to... I just love that scene because it's a turning point for Derek. It's a turning point for the two Dereks we see. We're seeing one Derek in black and white, one Derek in color... Here's the turning point of why we have this new Derek in color. In the color scenes. Has anything you've done made your life better? Another fantastic line in this movie. Has anything in your life... Has anything you've done make your life better? Wow. You know, Avery Brooks is great. I love it. My... my my help is not unconditional. He does a great job in this. You know. 
All the scenes he's in. But here we get why Derek has shifted. You know, the white supremacist didn't believe shit. You know, he's telling Danny this whole story. They're sitting on the bleachers at night after that neo-Nazi party. And he's telling him this whole story. We can't forget that he's literally, he's just telling the story about what happened to him in prison. You know, the white supremacists didn't believe in shit. They don't. It's not real. It's all bullshit and propaganda and fake and persona. It's not real. And he finally gets it. He finally understands, but he's trying to get them to believe. He's trying to get them to realize that what you're doing is against the code. (laughs) Fuck. The white supremacist code. Why are you taking drugs from black people and selling it to your friends? Why are you taking drugs from Mexicans and selling it to your friends? No, 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 no. We are white. We are white supremacists. Keep it in the white family. You know, his rhetoric destroys... His credibility in prison, because in prison, they don't give a shit about the rhetoric. It's just about appearance. It's just about appearance and survival. Absolutely. Survival and appearance. So it gets him in in trouble that his rhetoric, his 100% rhetoric gets him in trouble. And then he finally realizes at this point when they go, when they rape him, when they, when they, you know, go against him because he's just telling him the rhetoric, um, He finally gets that it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. With a little help from Sweeney. Absolutely. Wow. This is a little subtle thing. I know you've seen. I know you saw it. This is a little subtle thing, but it impacts me a lot every time i watch it it impacts me a lot to see when danny gets paroled and he's leaving and he fist pumps lamont to see this character complete 180 it's emotional it's impactful to see him respect someone that much to do a black culture thing fist pumping is not a white culture thing it's not a white culture thing to see him offer a black culture thing to a black person is insanely impactful and wonderful and brilliant and i love it I love that scene. I love when he does that. Take it easy on the brothers. I love it. I killed two people. What does he say? I killed two people, Danny, and nothing ever made me feel better. Can you get that all the anger, everything I had, all the spite, all the anger and frustration, I killed two guys and I didn't feel any better. I took their lives. It's a hell of a thing killing a man. Took away all he's got and all he's ever going to have. It's no little thing to kill someone. It isn't. It doesn't matter who they are. And he gets. He tells Danny, I killed two people and it didn't make me feel any better. It didn't take that anger or frustration away. That's such a great, it's impact, it, 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 it's a great, like, getting Danny to see the holes in the situation. I love that scene, that quick scene where Danny and him, uh, Danny and Derek are pulling down all the Nazi shit and they pull down the flag together. Brilliant scene. Love it. I love the unsteady cam shot. That's great. It's very well done. Oh, the drive-by. When we see the drive-by, it's not a drive-by shooting. It is a drive-by at that same point where the the black guys are in the car and they're like, man, and they do the little, you know, faking shooting. You've seen that the hate has shifted from, we've seen the 
unsubstantiated hate from the white side. Now we see the unsubstantiated hate from the black side. You know, what did, what did, what did, I have this note for later, I'm going to say it later. You know, we see that, that hate, that perpetual hate. They both are guilty. Both sides are guilty of taking that hate to the wrong place and to the wrong actions. The dinner scene with the dad in the past, it's hard to watch. It sucks. It's, 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 it's sad to see. Um, what's, what's wrong with all the other books in the course? They're not good enough because of, you know, two PhDs says they're not. No, black books have not been given a fucking chance. So how do you know that they're not good enough? You don't because they haven't even been given a chance. Books written by white people have been given a chance all this time. But now that we're introducing books by black people, can't they be just as good? No, because you're white. It's it's such a hard... Ah, don't you get that, you know, movies made by Asian Americans or Asians or Japanese or, or Koreans can be just as great as movies made by Americans in America. Can't you get that a book written by a black person can't be just as fantastic as a book written by a white person? What I love about Django Unchained when he says fucking uh, um, Alexander Dumas is black. This movie, this this the three fucking... The Three Musketeers is written by a black man. And you didn't even know it. Can't you get that it can be just as great and impactful and not from a white person and from a black person? This is what this, this scene is. It's, it's hard to listen to and hard to watch. Don't you get it? That they haven't been given a chance? And their stories and their views can be just as impactful maybe even more impactful than something written that we've always heard and read and watched and and when the scene ends it's hard it's so hard to watch that scene that when the scene ends i feel like crying like danny's danny's got tears in his eyes i feel like uh he's just being taught the wrong thing he's just it started that early and it's hard to watch like the kid the nazi uniform the the the, the 5 year old the nazi uniform like the kid at the execution for william wallace you know on the on the shoulders of his dad it's hard to see that that you are teaching them from that age it it oh it's hard um love this shower scene when when derek goes and takes a shower the slow mos are brilliant i Another one of those, I, I said in the Lord of the Rings fellowship, that scene that I would love to just freeze frame. I said it in legend, that scene I would love to just freeze frame. This is another one I would love to just freeze frame and have that as a picture. When he gets out of the shower and he's looking at himself in the mirror and the <sighs> Edward Norton, man, Edward Norton, that look of regret and sorrow and oh dread when he sees the swastika on his chest and puts his hand up to it like i wish it wasn't there what does it look like if it wasn't there i want a freeze frame of him with that face looking into the mirror and his hand over the swastika but enough to see the swastika like what he's putting his hand over just a gorgeous shot. Thank you. Thank you. Gorgeous shot. Who directed it? I'm, I'm, I want to say his name again. Tony K. Thank you, Tony K. Brilliant shot. Brilliant shot. Love it. That coffee shop that they go into... The night after... You know... The night after the neo-Nazi party where he assaults Cameron, takes the gun away from um, Seth, almost shoots him, blah, 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 whatever, runs away. So he's created this whole community that's after him. 
And so the misdirection of Derek being the one in in peril, Derek being the one who were worried about his life. We don't even think about Danny. We don't, we haven't even thought like who can We're not even thinking about that. We are focused on Derek and his struggle and his like almost oh, oh shit when they go to the coffee shop in the in the morning and they're taking he's taking Danny to to school um it's the same coffee shop in coffee shop in Reservoir Dogs it's not opening anymore i know exactly where it is on Wilshire and Robinson i can't remember uh i know where it is i can get there it's right across the street from the academy museum <laughs> it's literally right across the street from like the academy museum anyway it's the it's that shame copy shop you know you can you know what you're gonna do you're gonna get me shot by a bunch of white boys we are literally focused on Derek's peril not danny Gorgeous, fantastic, wonderful misdirection. And when Danny... Oh! I'm telling you, I did not... I did not expect when Danny gets shot. He did such a great job of misdirection and throwing you the wrong way and Derek's... Derek's struggle and everybody's after Derek and he's like, man, are, is everything going to be okay? Danny's like, is everything? Yeah, I'll figure it out. And we're more focused on Derek, but not expecting Danny to get shot. And here is the note I was going to say from earlier. For what? For what the fuck does Danny get shot? Why? Because... Three black kids were bullying a white kid and he stood up for the white kid who was being bullied. He didn't call anybody any slur. He didn't hit anybody. He just literally stood up against them and, and stopped them from bullying some white kid. He didn't... Danny didn't fucking do anything. That's what's really hard about that scene. If you if you think about it, Danny didn't do shit. It's that all that hate build up. Like I said, we see all the hate and misdirected hate from Derek's point of view the entire fucking movie. And here at the end, we get the hate of the impact from the, the, the black point of view being being suppressed and being treated like shit from so many white people that this hate is now on Danny who literally didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. He stopped you from bullying three of you from bullying a white kid. And what do you do? You shoot him. Oh, fuck. If you've seen this movie and you didn't have that thought you didn't draw that conclusion. You didn't have that feeling. I I encourage you to watch it again with that mindset. Danny didn't do anything. All he did was stand up for somebody who was being bullied. And he was shot at the end of the film by an angry black person who has all this negative energy taught to him his entire life just like Derek all this negative energy taught to him his entire life he's a product of his environment unfortunately and Danny gets shot because of it it's this movie is insanely impactful and insanely wonderful I have more tears in my eyes than Edward Norton at that point Edward Norton is probably one, unfortunately, he's probably one of those actors that cannot cry on demand. That's fine. I'm not going to fault him for that. He does a great job at making me feel like he is hurting at that moment. But maybe he's not one of those actors that can pull the tears because it's not until they cut that we see fake tears in his eyes. It's fine. It's fine. Not everybody can do that. I'm not going to fault him for being not being able to do that. Not. Hate is baggage.
I can't say that Ed, Nor Ed Furlong, sorry. I can't say that Ed Furlong is a great narrator, but he narrates this fantastically. I can't say I would want him to narrate my film, not at all. Like, you know, like when you hear Morgan Freeman, you're like, God, you know, in Shawshank Redemption, you're like, I would love to have him narrate anything I have, anything, everything I have. Yes. I would love to hear, you know, James Earl Jones narrate anything I have. Absolutely. Yes. Ed, Nor Ed Furlong, excuse me, Ed Furlong, I can't say that I would want him to narrate my anything, anything at all, but I think he does a fantastic job narrating this film, excuse me, this film. And here's the end, you know, hate is baggage, and he has that line that I already quoted, brilliant. He does such a great job narrating this film. And where do we end this film? Where we started the beach but in color now we start the film black and white in the past venice beach we end the film we're looking at the beach in color this is a fantastic film like i said before i would have said 10 out of 10 but i had to change it to to nine five out of five i had to change it to four and a half because there is just a huge mistake in filming and that that camera reflection that camera excuse me shadow i cannot in good conscience give something 10 out of 10 if it has that big of a mistake in it even if it's only one mistake sorry that's too big of a mistake you could have easily fixed that easily anyway moving on brilliant film brilliant 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 love it but it's hard to watch. So, if you haven't seen it, I'm sorry, I just ruined everything for you. <laughs> if you have seen it, I challenge you to watch it again with some of my notes in mind because maybe you didn't think of it the same way I did. Maybe you did. Maybe you did. And thank you for listening. I know this was a little long for you know a two-hour movie. It was a little long, but worth it because I had some things to say. I will get you another review as soon as possible. I need to make up one so at some point you're going to get two in one week because I need to make some make one up. Uh, okay, thanks a lot for listening and uh, I will talk to you real soon.